Permeable pavements look like ordinary pavement, but they provide environmental benefits by soaking up and cleaning the rainwater and snowmelt that runs off them, rather than draining it directly to storm sewers. This reduces the negative impacts paved areas have on our rivers, lakes, and wetlands that receive their drainage, and helps to restore the natural water cycle. Permeable pavements contain many small openings, like joints or pores, that allow storm water to drain through them instead of running off the surface, as it does on impervious pavements like asphalt and concrete. They could be used for low to medium traffic roads, parking spaces, plazas, walkways, and driveways. Water that's infiltrated through the permeable pavement is stored temporarily in the washed gravel base. There it either percolates into the underlying soil and replenishes the groundwater system, or the filtered water is conveyed to a municipal storm sewer or other stormwater practice by a perforated pipe subdrain. There are a variety of types of permeable pavements that differ in terms of their surface layer. Permeable interlocking pavers are precast modular units made of concrete, pervious concrete, or rubber and plastic composites, designed to create open joints between pavers that are filled with fine gravel and installed in an open graded gravel base and subbase. Pervious concrete is a rigid pavement installed on an open graded gravel base that uses a cementitious binder to adhere aggregate together, similar to conventional concrete, except that the fine aggregate component is minimized or eliminated, which results in the formation of connected pores throughout. Permeable interlocking grid systems, or grid pavers, are precast concrete or manufactured plastic grids with open cells that can be filled with gravel or a mixture of sand, gravel and topsoil, and planted with grass or low-growing ground covers, and they're installed on an open graded gravel base. When properly installed and maintained, they can last for 20 years or more. Maintenance involves vacuuming them annually to prevent premature clogging and plowing and applying de-icers when needed during winter months. Because they drain very quickly, they're less prone to ice buildup during the winter thaw freeze cycles. The contributing drainage area is the area from which runoff directed to the practice originates. Contributing drainage areas include the impervious and pervious areas draining to the practice and the practice itself. They should be free of obvious point sources of pollutants, like leaking waste containers or spills or failing sediment controls, and trash and sediment and debris should be removed regularly. To ensure that no changes have been made to the size of the practice, it's good to check the dimensions of the permeable pavement area using a measuring wheel. A sure sign of drainage issues is standing water on the surface of a permeable pavement, or visual evidence of frequent ponding, such as accumulated sediment or staining on the pavement surface. Permeable interlocking pavers, pervious concrete, and porous asphalt needs to be swept and vacuumed regularly to remove fine sediment from the joints and pores, and plowed of snow and spread with de-icing salt as needed during winter. Sand should not be spread as an anti-slip agent as it will clog the joints or pores. Permeable interlocking grid systems may be filled with topsoil and planted with grass. Routine maintenance of grid system grass cover is the same as conventional lawns. In the first two months of establishment, plantings need to be irrigated frequently, so bi-weekly in the absence of rain, where compost amended topsoil is used to fill grid cells, periodic top dressing with compost should be all that's needed to maintain healthy vegetation cover, and application of chemical fertilizers should not be a part of routine maintenance. When inspecting the condition of the pavement surface, check for damage, displacement, or deformation of the surface that impairs its functions as a pavement and could be a hazard. Look for displaced or missing pavers, ruts, open joints, and sediment accumulation. Check if the aggregate fill in the paver joints or grid cells needs topping up, and look for excessive or unsightly weed growth between the pavers. Where a part of the design, the condition of the monitoring well that will be used to track drainage performance of the practice should be checked for signs of damage and sediment accumulation. Any water level logger deployed should be checked for proper function and a manual water level measurement should be collected along with the date and time. 
Flows exceeding the storage capacity of the practice are conveyed to an adjacent drainage system by an overflow outlet structure, like a flush curb, a curb cut, or a catch basin. Overflow outlet structures must be kept free of obstructions to ensure stormwater is safely conveyed during major storm events. Subdrains are an optional component that may be included where the permeability of the underlying native soil is low or due to other constraints where an impermeable liner is required. They are installed in the pavement base to collect and convey filtered water to an adjacent drainage system. Subdrains are comprised of perforated pipes wrapped in gravel blankets and in some cases geotextile filter fabric. The perforated pipe must be kept free of obstructions to ensure that the subsurface water storage capacity of the practice drains within a specified time period. A maintenance port standpipe may be connected to the perforated pipe to provide a means of flushing and inspecting it. Perforated pipes should be routinely flushed with water to remove sediment, and if the subdrain is equipped with a flow restrictor, it too must be inspected and cleaned regularly. If the objective of the inspection is to verify that functional performance of the permeable pavement is acceptable, it's recommended that some testing be performed in addition to visual inspections. The surface infiltration rate of the permeable pavement should be measured in several locations using a single ring infiltrometer to assess if rehabilitative maintenance is required. Follow ASTM method C1701 for pervious concrete or C1781 for permeable interlocking concrete pavers. Proper drainage function may also be tested through performing a simulated storm event test where a known volume of water is delivered to the practice and the time required to drain it is tracked. Alternatively, drainage function can be evaluated by continuous monitoring of precipitation and subdrain flow over a few natural storm events. Acceptable stormwater treatment performance may also be tested through automated sampling of untreated runoff and treated subdrain effluent during natural storm events and testing of composite samples for common pollutants by an analytical laboratory. For more details on inspection and maintenance of permeable pavements and other low-impact development practices, please visit sustainabletechnologies.ca.